guys, it's Lauren. I wanted to jump on here quick to explain some things. You probably know by the title that I'm going to be talking about delivery decisions, um, kind of why we're inducing, why we're going early, um, just kind of the ins and outs and just some more information for you. You've probably noticed that I'm sitting in Mr. Cade's nursery here on his little rocker glider. Um, so you get a little bit of a sneak peek, uh, but I am going to get a full nursery tour up soon, so be on the lookout for that. So today is actually Thursday, September 14th, and we are being induced one week from today. Next Thursday, September 21st, we go in at 7 p.m., go into the hospital, um, and I'll talk a little bit about what the induction will probably look like. But I wanted to touch on why we are inducing early. Um, I'll be 37 weeks and four days pregnant um, on that induction day. Not that he'll come on that day, trust me. It might be a long process, we shall see. Um, but if you don't know already, I have type 1 diabetes, so I am a high-risk pregnancy. Um, I've been monitored very closely, especially since... 32 weeks, I've been going twice weekly, if you've been following along. Mondays, I have a BPP ultrasound and an NST, and Thursdays, I have an NST and just like a regular OB checkup. Now, at 35 weeks and two days, uh, Mr. Cade here was measuring an estimated 7 pounds and 9 ounces already. Now, trust me, I know that ultrasound measurements can be wrong, um, but they can be wrong in either direction as well, up, um, up or down for weight estimates. Um, so that is one big consideration moving forward with an induction decision. Now, my perinatologist, a, aka a maternal fetal medicine doctor, aka a high-risk OB, <laughs> Lots of terms there, uh, but he did recommend based on the size and just kind of how the pregnancy was going, he recommended being induced between 37 and 39 weeks. Now my OB kind of took that information as well as my endocrinologist kind of um, gave her two cents as well and we just kind of picked a date which it was very weird to answer the question of which day of the week works best for you to have a baby. Um, which was just kind of funny, but we did choose a Thursday, so then, um, a Thursday evening, so then Teddy would only have to take off that Friday, and then hopefully he'll be born Friday, maybe on that Saturday, and then we'd have the weekend, um, just kind of basing it off of work schedules, which is a little funny. Now, another decision-making factor, um, apart just from his large size, is that along with type 1 diabetes, um, towards the end of your pregnancy, the closer you get to 40 weeks, your placenta can actually start to fail. Um, so basically, we were weighing the pros and cons of the risks of keeping him in longer with the risk of him getting too big to have a vaginal delivery and my placenta failing versus the risks of taking him out sooner and then just all of the um, premature risks, you know, under underdeveloped lungs um, and just kind of not ready to be on the outside world, um, if you know what I mean. So that's where my perinatologist kind of gave that window of 37 to 39 weeks. They probably weren't going to let me go past 39 just because of his size. I have stressed my entire pregnancy how I would prefer not to have a C-section. And obviously when I say these things, um, I clearly would do whatever it will take to get baby here safely and to keep me safe. Um, the bigger the baby, the higher the risk of their shoulders getting stuck, shoulder dystocia, and causing what can be permanent nerve damage in their neck, down to their arms, things like that, broken collarbone, collarbone uh, dislocated shoulders, things like that. Um, you know, if, if I were able to pass the head but the shoulders got stuck or sometimes the head literally just won't go through the birth canal. Um, so that's another reason why we chose kind of an earlier date. Um, I hope I'm answering enough questions 
I realize I'm just kind of blabbing about this subject, um, but I wanted to just get my thoughts out there and hopefully this is making more sense to you guys. So now switching gears a little bit to talk about how the induction process will probably look. Um, my OB did say at 37 weeks and four days, she's going to be assuming that my cervix isn't going to be doing much of anything on its own. She actually did check me this morning and I was completely closed, no action going on on my own. Um, so we will probably start uh, that evening, that Thursday evening, with um, something along the lines of Cervidel where it's inserted vaginally and it is a cervix softening medicine. So we'll probably let that work for, you know, range of a couple hours to overnight. We will just kind of have to play everything by ear. At that point, we could either start some Pitocin or we could do a Foley catheter bulb, the balloon, which manually dilates the cervix. Um, yeah, there's, I guess those are the couple options kind of to get things going. I'll probably have to use some Pitocin. Um, not sure when they would break my water. It's all just so dependent on what my body is doing. So um, I hope that part kind of makes sense. I'm just gonna kind of play it by ear. Again, going in with an open mind as far as pain management. Ideally, I would like to not have an epidural. Now I know Pitocin contractions can be intense and harsh. Um, so again, like I said, going in with an open mind, um, I would like to do some hydrotherapy, some uh, water action, whether that's shower or getting in the tub. In the hospital that we are delivering at, there are four rooms with a giant birthing tub like in the middle of the room. Uh, I did kind of put the bug into my OB's ear that I would like one of those. And she said, um, because there's only the four and it's kind of first come first serve, it depends on how busy the delivery ward is on that night. Um, but she did say she would try her best to kind of reserve one of those for me. Uh, so fingers crossed I can have that. But again, every room does have like a tub shower combination so I can get into the tub to labor they will not let me actually deliver in the water just because with the diabetes I'm high risk and I need to be monitored um, the monitors are wireless and waterproof which is really nice so I can walk and get in the tub as much as I want um, but if they were needed to you know whisk me away somewhere they do need me to deliver out of the water now, with that being said, I can deliver and push in any position that I want, which is another reason why I'm hoping to stay away from an epidural. Um, as far as pain management, they have the nitrous gas, the laughing gas, which I could use. Um, they also have, and I'm blanking on the name, it's an IV medicine. Um, couldn't tell you, but it's another medicine. Uh, that goes in my IV for pain management as well. So if the pain is getting to be too much, I'd like to do it in that order. Hydrotherapy, nitrous, the IV med, whatever that is called, and then the epidural. Um, so let's see, I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. I talked about kind of why we're going early um, and then what the induction will probably look like or some possibilities, um, and then kind of what my, what I would like to do for pain management. Um, and we have seven days till this induction process starts. Holy cow. All right, guys, I think I've covered all I wanted to, um, at least all I can think about here. Sorry if this video is kind of all over the place and kind of just me blabbing, but I just wanted to get my thoughts out there and hopefully clear the air and answer any questions that you guys have. But if you have any other questions, please leave them for me in the comments down below. I definitely read them all. I try to respond to as many as I can. And I will see you guys next time in my next video. Bye, guys. Mwah.